Okay, so I've been sent many different screens for Raspberry Pi in the past, and this particular one is the Raspad 3, which is a 10-inch device, but I've been sent a different 10-inch screen. This one's been sent to me by SunFounder, and they wanted me to test this one out, so let's get it open. So these are the cables that come in the box. There is a USB-A to uh, what looks like a power cable. There's a load of spanners and some bolts and standoffs and things in there. Got a tiny USB-C cable, nice and short. USB-A to micro USB, micro HDMI to HDMI, standard HDMI to HDMI. A couple of these little strips, not quite sure what they're for at the moment. And uh, it also comes with a power adapter, uh, which is 12 volt, 1500 milliamp. A book of what looks like pretty detailed instructions. By the way, if you can hear fan noise, which I usually don't have any fan noise in my videos, it's because I'm currently running my Pi 4 8 gig at 2325 with 950 on the GPU. Uh, just giving it a test and I'm letting it run and it's been absolutely fine. Uh, there's a new version of Lacquer out and GameCube performance is the best I've seen on a Pi for a long time. Anyway, back to the screen. So uh, the thing I really liked about this 10 inch screen uh, when I was offered it is that it has incredibly good support for various different devices. So uh, they mentioned the Rock Pi, the Raspberry Pi Zero, Banana Pi, another Rock Pi, Odroid, Orange Pi, Nvidia Jetson, uh, Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, it, it really does have excellent support for single board computers but also pretty much any other HDMI device. And when you look at the back, you can see how they've done it. So these are adjustable. So when you're fitting a single board computer to the back of this, uh, you have standard connections. So USB-A, uh, which I guess is for the touchscreen, HDMI, and also the power input. But because these are movable, you can put other different single board computers on there. So something like uh, you know one of my favorites, Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, I can pop that on this 10 inch screen. And that's done by just undoing these. So basically you just twist those down. I've already done this one and you can move them in and out and you've got three different ones you can play around with to get the right size. And in the case of my Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, I guess I would just use these two here, such a small light board. Uh, or I could use these uh, depending on which was gonna allow me to still plug it in. So let's plug in that one. And the uh, if I use this is the data port, but also can power a 02W. So if I do that, and just move this out a bit. Yeah, and then just tighten that up. And I can use some of these from this kit. Okay, so that's not gonna go anywhere now. So I guess if I use their standard HDMI cable, which is reasonably short, pop that in the bottom. And then uh, because they use mini on a 02W, you're gonna need an adapter Luckily, I already have one of these, which is standard HDMI to mini. Pop that in, plug in the mains adapter in the bottom here. Let's spin it around. Oh, you can see it's booting up. I don't know if the touch is going to work straight out. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it has a pointer. So does that think it knows touch? Oh, okay, so touch isn't working at the moment. So I need to do something else for touch. I wonder if that is another one of the USB ports. So I need to close this down somehow. <laughs> And I haven't got anything plugged into this, uh, so yeah, I didn't think that through. Maybe I need to plug it in here, and I wonder if that other one is the touch one. Yeah, let's give that a try before I even read the instructions. So I'm going to switch it off, move this to the furthermost one, which is the one that only powers the Pi. So I'm guessing this is for touch. Let's plug that in. Ah, the touchscreen cable is fragile. Please fix it with two black fiber tape provided. Uh, okay, so that was the that was the little tape bits that I had. Yeah, that's gone in nicely. So let's pop that in just to make it that it's not gonna go anywhere, and nice and stable. And this is gonna need to plug into here. Well, luckily, in my box of tricks, I've got a USB-A to C, uh, and also a USB-C to micro. Have I got another way around doing this? I don't think I've got another way around doing this. So if I plug that into here, obviously you wouldn't have this issue with a Pi 4, which I will be having a look at in a minute, uh, and then plug that one in. Is this the right way around? Good thing about USB-C is it's reversible. Okay, so now we should have touch control. Let's switch it on again. 
Okay, so we've got Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye and we have touch screen control. So again, remember this is on a 0.2W, uh, so I'll use the Puffin browser, not use the uh, Chromium one that's in there. And uh, let's do a search. Oh, it's not giving me a keyboard. Oh, I did have I did have in one of my other videos, um, I added a keyboard. There's uh, on the App Store, you can add a keyboard in. Okay, yeah, so I can't, I'm gonna have to add a keyboard to this to be able to get this up and running, but you can add an on-screen touch keyboard. Now, have I got it? I might have it in another OS. So let's shut this down. I can't remember which one I used for my camera video a while ago, but I definitely put an on-screen keyboard on that. And I've just noticed while editing this, uh, this looks awful. Uh, it looks like my head is on the end of my arm. So sorry if I've given anybody nightmares. Okay, so I thought it was gonna be this OS that had the touchscreen keyboard in, but uh, it isn't in this one. So I'm gonna have to try some others uh, or just install it in the, uh, in the bullseye that I was using just now. But uh, while I'm in this operating system, let's go through the buttons. So there are five buttons on the back of this, if I can feel it. That turns it off and on again. Uh, and then we have brightness control. It was on 50% brightness. And uh, you can see if I bring it all the way up to 100% brightness, that is actually a very bright display and it's really sharp as well. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but the, yeah, the graphics on it look really nice. And then the top two buttons are volume control. I'm not playing anything at the moment, but I'll play something later on. So let's shut that down and uh, I'm going to have to use my Pi 4 to install a keyboard on there. I'll have to look it up in a video. Before I do that, I'm just checking this because uh, I'm going to have to turn this off now. It'd be refreshing to turn off the fan because this blows cold air towards me. I don't normally use the fan at all because the ice tower cooler on its own is enough, but 2325 is a big old overclock. Yeah, working nicely. Let's shut that down and I'll unplug the fan because it was running at 5 volts and it really is cold in here. And let's switch OS's. So this is Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, uh, which I'm using ZRAM on to give it much better performance on the Pi 02 w and it's got the Puffin browser as well. And I'm going to use my own video to help me set it up because I can't remember what app I used. So it's going to be this video. Uh, here's the keyboard. So it's called Matchbox Keyboard. So let's go to the Add Remove Store. I'm always using my own videos to <laughs> help me do things. So Matchbox Keyboard. So it looked like I had two, which were ticked, didn't it? So let's see if we can see that. On-screen keyboard, GTK plus input for on-screen. Yeah, perfect. Right, so let's do apply. Hit OK. OK, there's no keyboard in here, so I think I might have to restart. So let's restart. Control Alt Delete. And reboot. So now I have the keyboard all installed. So if I go down the bottom here, accessories and keyboard, you can see that a keyboard comes up. And if I was to call something up, so say for instance terminal, uh, and let's move that out of the way. And if I was going to type something like reboot, you can see it all comes up. And this is all movable. It's a lot better than the other keyboard I was using before. This is filling the screen and the, all the digits are really nice and big. Okay, let's put a Pi 4 on the back of this screen. I didn't really want to take apart my Dixon Industries case, but uh, I'm going to have to because I can't find any more Pies. Uh, they're all in cases that are quite hard to get out of. So it's definitely a neater fit with a Pi 4. You can see the touchscreen cable is in there, all tidied away. The two very short cables, the HDMI and the USB to power it. And uh, actually it's pretty slim overall. It couldn't be much slimmer with a Pi 4 on it. So this is my iPad Pro with the protective case on it. Here is the Sun Founder screen. And here's the Raz. Pad 3, and there's my cat. And I've added these two extra standoffs so that it's the same depth. So if you're mounting it as a screen on something, which is obviously the intention on this because it doesn't have a separate stand, then uh, it needs to be flat. Starting off with an M.2 drive running Windows 11. And uh, I know Terry Dactylus will appreciate this, as I always appreciate his comments. And he'll definitely appreciate that I couldn't get it working on my 4 gig Pi, so I've moved over to my 8 gig Pi. Uh, it's leaned on this, but I'm using all the same connectivity at the back. Uh, and as you can see, the touch screen is working fine. Fide OS or Chrome OS works really well on this, as you would expect, because it is a touch screen operating system. I did notice there actually isn't any uh, speakers on the back of this. Uh, it has got volume controls, but obviously that's if you've got speakers attached, but uh, they don't come with any. But if I pause, if I skip through, 
and play. All the touch screen is really, really good. Let's just get that home button up and then swipe up and swipe through the apps. So very responsive. I have noticed there's not a lot of room to get an SD card in when the Pi 4 is in this slot. Uh, I can barely get my fingers in there. But uh, it is doable, but it's not as handy. I suppose you could probably play around with it and orient it slightly differently. So let's give Windows 95 a try. Boot dash L C. Yep, still works. So obviously this isn't going to work in touchscreen, but this is Windows 95, genuine Windows 95. Uh, running in Dospian. So system tools, drive space, uh, let's get a few more windows up, control panel, just to reminisce a bit and let's shut that down. <laughs> it's now safe to turn off your computer. So now I'm using it as a second screen, you can see I'm just about to log in on the main screen, so let's hit enter and see how it automatically sets up. It looks like it's mirroring the displays at the moment. It's definitely got a nice rich colour, better than my Acer, and a bit more depth as well, so the black is, uh, is darker. Right, so how does this work? Go up, go left, go right. Oh, so right at the moment. So I need to go into screen somehow and change that. Display configuration and I should be able to drag it in the right. So this is beneath the display. So if we put it down there and hit apply. Yeah, so now if I drag down with the mouse, you can see, and if I was to pull that window down into that screen, that works. It's not gonna work with touch because I haven't got it set up for that. I'm just using an HDMI cable. Um, but uh, yeah, if we were to pick say Chromium, so let's play a bit of my video. Now I can't drag this if it's full screen, can I? No, so I'll have to go escape and I'll have to drag that down and then go full screen down there and see what happens. Yeah, that looks like it's working all right. Yeah, nice and smooth. Yeah, definitely got really nice contrast to it. Uh, in fact, it shows terribly on the screen. So if I do that and then lower this down, you should be able to see it a bit better. There you go, that's a bit better. And here it is on my Xbox Series S, so let's just jump into a single player game. Yeah, to me it looks great. So thanks very much to Sunfounder for sending me this display to review. It is very impressive and uh, very, very versatile. I wonder what I'm going to use it for. But uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.